Today we will take a look at the beautiful city of Venice, Italy. This is the main canal called the Grand Canal. It is a very busy waterway where there is many, many gondolas and lots of traffic. Did you know that there are 26 miles of canals inside of the city of Venice? There are also a stunning 422 bridges that go throughout the various canals in Venice. This is perhaps the most famous bridge called the Rialto Bridge. There are three different ways to get from one side to the other. There is a broad middle walkway that is lined by stores on each side and two stairways on the back side of the stores that is visible from the Grand Canal. The stores were created on the bridge to help pay for the upkeep of the bridge. They also go well in the area that has always been a market. This bridge is 157 feet long from each side of the canal, 75 feet deep, and has a clearance of 24 feet, which is one of the tallest bridges that is in Venice. Another really cool fact is that there are 108 churches in Venice alone. Each has its own bell tower, and they all chime on the hour and half hour. That's quite a few bells to hear. But one of the great joys of Venice is the never-ending bells chiming from the hundreds of campanili, bell towers. The bells are rung at various times throughout the day, but at 6 p.m. there is always a symphony of ringing bells that can be heard from near and far no matter where you are in Venice. Each bell has its distinctive sound. Some are tinny, some are striking, some are eloquent. In the 5th century, in the place where Venice is now, there was a large lagoon with several small marshy islands that were separated by natural canals. As the settlement grew and they began to build better buildings, the natural canals were made wider and deeper to allow the building materials to be moved around the lagoon by boat. The canals aren't very deep, often only 10 or 15 feet deep. Over the centuries, the canals were reinforced with bricks and other materials by the lagoon's inhabitants. Venice is definitely in Italy, but the city is also sort of Balkan. The city was built on wooden piles, which were made out of hard pieces of alder that were driven down into the compressed clay beneath the city and these were sourced from the Karst region of what is now Slovenia and also from forests further south, today's Croatia and Montenegro. The city has been supported and water resistant for many centuries, but it is still unfortunately and infamously sinking every year. famous Venetian skateboarder who now lives in the United States, Pellegrin, was once quoted saying, there's no skating in Venice, like at all. You can't even ride a board down the street in Venice because of the architecture of the city. Everything is stone. It sounds too crazy to be true, but bicycling, skateboarding, and roller skating blading are all banned in Venice. The city is not a very conducive way to tr get around the city anyways, but there is a hefty fine if you're caught doing any of these things. It's best that you stick to the legal forms of transportation by walking by foot or taking one of the famous gondolas. Believe it or not, it is not easy to become a professional gondolier. So when you climb on board, you will always be getting the real deal. It takes over 400 hours of training to become a licensed gondolier. Gondoliers have to pass a very difficult exam on Venetian history and landmarks, and there are foreign language requirements too. It's a noble profession that has been passed down from generation to generation, and only three to four new gondolier licenses are granted each year. I bet you always wonder, because all gondoliers you see are male, 
Well, there is finally an exception. The first and only female gondoliera is Georgia Bascolo. She was the first woman to pass the very difficult qualification exam in 2010. She is the daughter of a gondolier, and when her very own father was asked what he thought about the situation, he said, Hmm, I still think being a gondolier is a man's job, but I'm sure that with experience, Georgia will be able to do it. Wow. Talk about a job that has been traditionally male for many, many years. Way to go, Georgia. Let's take a closer look at these very interesting boats. Each is 35 feet long and weighs a whopping 1,100 pounds. You guys, that's as big as a grand piano and weighs more than the average horse. Even though it's really heavy, it's quite easy for one trained person to move and steer using only a single oar. You will notice that the front decoration on all gondolas is called the pharaoh. The shape is in an S shape, which represents the curve of the Grand Canal as it cuts through the island of Venice, known as the Sisteri. The one backwards facing prong symbolizes the island of Gudice, which is south of the main island of Venice. The embellishment at the top of the pharaoh is like the shape of the doge's hat, and the little arch between the flourish and the top prong represents the Rialto Bridge. This pharaoh also keeps and helps as kind of a protective bumper, just in case the gondola runs into other boats or walls. I bet you noticed, but maybe you've kind of always wondered, why are all gondolas black? Well, they're painted black by law. Before this law was passed, gondoliers spent a lot of time and effort and money decorating their gondolas to attract customers. And the designs would have been an eyesore. Not to mention that the wealthiest could spend the most on the decorations and would therefore have an advantage. Today, all the gondolas are a uniform black on the outside, but many are decorated on the inside to set themselves apart. The outside of the gondola, or the hall, must be treated with a new coat of varnish every 40 days. This will protect it against a lagoon pest that eats into the wood. With proper maintenance, a good gondola can last for 15 to 20 years years. Graceful gondolas have been used to get around this Adriatic city for more than 10 centuries. The earliest recorded use dated back to 1094. They were once the main form of transportation around the Venetian canals. Towards the end of the 16th century, there were an estimated 10,000 gondolas, which created quite a traffic jam throughout the city. Today, however, there are only about 425 gondolas in Venice total. It might seem a little bizarre, but the left side of the gondola is about nine inches wider than the right side of the boat, so it's always leaning on its side. This actually makes the boat easier for a single rower to handle the boat alone. So, exactly how much would it cost me if I wanted to take a ride in a gondola in Venice? Well, a scenic ride on one of these elegant black boats doesn't come cheap. The official going rate is about 80 euros. That's about 90 American dollars for a 40-minute ride with an additional 20-minute increments costing another 40 euros. After 7 p.m., the price increases to 100 euros. That's almost 120 American dollars. And 50 additional euros for additional minutes. If you want someone to sing on your ride, it's going to cost you even more. 
One thing I wondered as I was learning about Venice was, how do police, fire, and ambulances get around in the city? Well, here's your answer. There are boats that serve as ambulances, fire boats, as well as police boats. Most of these boats are not designed like gondolas, but rather they are speed boats. That way they can respond to the scene of a crime or an injury quickly and get there safely. And one last little tidbit of information just for fun. Did you know that many cities around the world have a newspaper called a gazette? In fact, when I was growing up, my hometown newspaper was called the Journal Gazette. And I always kind of thought that was a strange name. I did not realize that that word actually comes from Venice. Many newspapers are named gazettes of some kind because the first newspaper sold in Venice was priced at one gazetta. So it is actually named after the coin that it costs to buy the first newspaper in Venice. Alas, our journey to Venice has come to an end. Be sure to click on the links included below this video to check out a few really cool videos as well as get a chance to experience a virtual reality view of the Rialto Bridge as well as your own tour on the Grand Canal in a gondola. I hope you enjoyed this. I wonder, do you think you would be a good gondola driver? What would make it an easy job? And what would make it a very difficult job? I don't think I would be a very good gondola driver. How about you?